is tough stuff to get through. Holy mackerel. So you just saw, we did a, an initial uh, stitch off here of genuine cowhide. Uh, and I even went with a smaller stitch to increase that uh, difficulty just a little bit. Uh, and we got through those three layers of genuine cowhide, no trouble at all with this 301A. And you can look from the side again, you're probably looking at around 12 ounces of leather. And uh, both the lock and the top stitch are spectacular. Then we took on a single layer of this weird orange stuff that looks like it's probably from space and you're not far off because Lizzie had uh, seen me put up the pictures of the initial work I was doing on this 301A and Lizzie Rose said I am trying to find a machine that can handle this biothane stuff that I want to use and uh, this biothane stuff I don't know if you can see that in the camera you probably can't but it's used in uh, space, sports, hospitals, and uh, it's used with pets and animals as well. So this stuff has all kinds of applications. And I've done commercial grade vinyl, I've done upholstery material, I've done leather of every sort, and I have to be honest, this is some really, really hardcore stuff. Uh, this single layer is probably the equivalent, you can look at it from the side, is probably the equivalent of around 14 ounces of leather. So Lizzie's hoping to be able to do multiple layers of this stuff. You know what? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, again, the whole thing with live premieres is we don't know how a machine is going to do. So this single layer, after going through three layers of leather, we made it through this stuff. And all in all, that stitch quality uh, is, is I'm, I'm satisfied with it. But now what we're going to try to do, and I'm using standard Coates and Clark uh, thread, folks, which is probably a big mistake. Um, standard Coates and Clark thread is going to be somewhere between 40 to 69 as far as size. 69 is on the super high end. Uh, so we're probably talking 30 to 40 in the size uh, of a standard Coates and Clark type thread. 69 is going to be closer when we start to move towards upholstery type thread. So I think the thread I chose is probably a big mistake with this 301A. But my gauge of success is I try to slide these two layers of this uh, biothane underneath uh, the presser foot. Uh, my gauge of success, if I can actually get it underneath there, holy mackerel, uh, is going to be that I can actually get through it. If I can get through it, you know what? I consider that a success because when it comes to sewing a specialized material like this biothane, this is my first time around. And I'm going with a standard Coates and Clark thread. Again, somewhere in the size range of 30 to 40. Um, I think I probably should have gone with either a Kevlar thread if I had some in the workshop, which I don't. Or I should have gone with a hard, uh, super hardcore uh, type thread that's designed for upholstery sewing. Didn't do either one. <laughs> you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. But I'm going to try to at least see if we can get through these two layers of biothane, this, these two pink layers, which is probably about 14 ounces. We can always find the appropriate type of thread to go with this machine. So let's see what happens. All right. So here we go, about 14 ounces of biothane, two layers of this stuff. We're just gonna try to get through it. The thread probably will break. All right, so here we go. Come on, buddy. Nice and slow, nice and slow, nice and slow. Did we make it through without breaking the thread? I will be shocked if we did. We actually did. We actually made it through without breaking the thread. You know, kudos to Coates and Clark. Holy mackerel. That should not have been the case. So here we have um, the, the top stitch. And again, choice of needle, choice of thread is going to be a big factor 
in how that stitch is going to ultimately present. I'm not totally satisfied with it. The spacing is okay, but the presentation of the stitch, I'm not super happy with. The lock stitch, all in all, is pretty good, especially considering we just went through about 14 ounces of this biothane stuff. But again, I think the choice of needle and I think the choice of thread will have a huge impact potentially for Lizzie as far as how that stitch is going to look. But you know what? Huge success in getting through two layers of this biothane uh, with a 301A that, again, just to remind you, only has a 0.54 amp motor. Only a 0.54 amp motor. And it got through a task that in my my gut feeling just knowing what this stuff is designed for it's designed for space applications outer space applications sports hospitals and uh, pets and animals I'll be honest with you I didn't know if we'd get through it and I, I was pretty sure that that thread that real basic over-the-counter Coates and Clark thread would break it didn't break so I am extremely pleased extremely pleased with all three outcomes for this 301A. Number one, we went through three layers of genuine cowhide. We went through that single orange layer. I've got to adjust my camera shot. Here, here was our first sew off. Three layers of genuine cowhide, and the stitch is just spectacular. And I even went with a smaller uh, stitch size just to give this machine even more challenge. We then went over to this biothane single layer, this orange stuff, and we made it through that as well. I was really pleased with that. And then finally, we went with two layers of biothane, and this 301A just shocked me with being able to get through that as well. Again, I'm not tickled pink with the way the stitch presents. I think it's satisfactory, but my bar is really high, folks. So I think if I had chose a different needle, if I had chose different thread that's designed to go through something as crazy as this biothane stuff, I think we would have had, we would have had even a better outcome. But you know what? I'm pleased. I'm very, very pleased. So let me move this 301A to the side, in my opinion, in total victory. And I'm going to move the next machine forward to try to tackle some sew-offs. And... Um, I should also mention that I am going to be uh, putting brand new decals and I'm going to be doing a brand new clear coat on this 301A. So it is going to have the luster and glory that you expect a machine from Scott's workbench to have. Just haven't done it yet, haven't had time, but it's going to happen for sure. All right, so let me move this 301A to the side and we're going to put a 66 red eye to the task next. And again, kind of like choice of thread, choice of needles. Uh, hindsight is 2020. I sure wish I'd picked a heavier base to put this 66 in. I've got it in a plastic base. That's a big mistake when you're trying to go through uh, super hardcore stuff and you're using a hand crank. But you know what? It is what it is. So I'm going to zoom in on the needle. I'm going to probably give us a little bit more uh, motivational type music to listen to. I'm also, I actually should zoom back out again real quick. I also should mention that this 66 Red Eye hand crank is also going to be available for sale, just like the 301A that sewed just before it. So if you've been looking for a hand crank, uh, a 66 Red Eye, which right now has gorgeous decals, but I'm probably going to do a clear coat application to get it, give it even more pop and luster and beauty. Uh, but the decals, as they are, and these are original decals, are in spectacular condition. So I'm extremely excited to say that this machine also is going to be uh, going on the, um, the block to be sold. I was almost going to say the auction block, but it's just going to be sold outright. So let me get some music on, and then let's see how this 66 hand crank does with some of these sew-offs. Let's see, what do we have? Let's do my Maimu Sunrise, if I'm saying that right. All right, let me turn my screen around so I can actually see what the heck is going on down at the needle. And I hope my shot is such that I won't get my big old arm in the way as I'm doing these sew-offs. 
Okay, so just like the 301A, the first thing we're going to sew off on is genuine cowhide. Just like the 301A, we're going to go through three layers. Again, we're probably, probably talking around 14 ounces of leather. Lots of clearance underneath this presser foot. I love this 66 when it comes to sewing heavy duty. All right, so let me kind of put my hand on the uh, base to hold it stable and uh, I'm gonna get this thing cranking. Here we go. I'm not even holding that leather. I can't because I've gotta I've gotta get this uh, this thing stable since it's in a plastic base. Beautiful stitching, beautiful stitching. I'll show it to you in just a second. So here we've got three layers of genuine cowhide. This is our top stitch. You know what, a 66, it's a magical machine when it's fully restored. And I've done this one mechan mechanically already, I haven't done it aesthetically. And even though it's not been done aesthetically, it's still gorgeous. And look at that lock stitch. I'll pull it way back and you can kind of get a glimpse of it. Uh, it's absolutely spectacular, as is the top stitch. So let me move over now. We've, we absolutely have a thumbs up success on that. Now we're going to try a single layer of this orange biothane. And we'll see how this 66 does with this. Again, like the 301A, I kind of regret... I'm going to turn down my volume a little bit. I kind of regret that I put a standard Coates and Clark thread on this uh, machine to sew this biothane stuff. No problem on leather, no problem on vinyl, but this biothane stuff is a beast unto itself. So let's see how it does with a single layer of this orange biothane. Here we go. All right, I looked at the camera and now I sewed off course. Oops, my thread came off, hold on a second. The things that can happen in a live video, isn't it a joy? <laughs> you know, at one time YouTube did not have these live premieres. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. I started to back tack there, I got so frazzled. YouTube didn't have these premieres and life was a little bit more simple then. You know what, you know what I mean? It was a little bit more simple. And now I back tacked and I got the thread all caught up in the bobbin case. Ah! All right, there we got her. Yeah, this is goofy. Come on, there we go. The things that can happen when you're shooting live premieres, huh? Oh well, it is what it is. I think you folks are pretty understanding. <laughs> All right, so I finally got my thread back the way it should be. I should bring my needle to the highest position. And here's our single layer of this biothane. Our top stitch is looking pretty good. Uh, and again, look at the thickness of this stuff. We're probably looking at around 8 to 10 ounces. And as we turn it over, we also have a fairly decent looking lock stitch. But again, the thread type and the needle type is going to really have a huge impact on the presentation of that stitch and I'm not satisfied with it completely. All in all I think it's uh, it's satisfactory but not to my standard. So the next thing we're going to try to do is two layers of this pink stuff and uh, this pink biothane I should say. So I'm going to try to get that underneath the uh, presser foot and we'll see if we can get through that uh, successfully. Again, my judgment, because this is kind of something that I'm learning right now, I have not done biothane on any machine before in the past. It's a very new product designed for space applications, sports, hospitals, pets and animals and stuff. So needle choice, thread choice is going to be a critical factor in getting a stitch output that is up to my standard, but getting through it is the first thing. So if we can get through it successfully, I consider that, just like the 301, I consider that to be a total victory since this is something that I don't have any uh, past experience with. 
let's put on some more music just to have some background music while we're doing this. All right, so here goes two layers of this pink biothane. Again, about probably about 10 to 12 ounces. We'll see how this machine does with this. Here we go. And I'm going to be holding that base initially just so I can get this thing going with some momentum, hopefully. Here we go. Oh, lordy. All right, well, we got through it. So Lizzie, good news, good news. We are able to get through two layers on the 301 and on the hand crank. And uh, the stitch quality, even using a standard Coates and Clark thread, which again, I think is a huge mistake on my part. Uh, I'm still overall satisfied with how this uh, 66 red eye just did. Uh, it really did, I think, overall an excellent job uh, sewing with a thread that probably is not the best choice. That's the understatement of the century uh, for a material like this. And again, look at from the side, two layers of this biothane. Uh, and also our lock stitch uh, is spectacular. Just like commercial grade vinyl, this stuff is really going to try to mess with that lock stitch as far as pulling that thread back up. Uh, so that upper tension is having to work extra hard to keep this from either being a missed stitch or from having a lot of bird nesting down there. So I think this is also a huge success. Uh, and again, I'm going to put them in order that we did them. If I can get them lined up here. So this is a 66 hand crank uh, Lizzie. Uh, and also just like the uh, 301A, we started with leather an absolute victory, three layers of leather and a spectacular stitch. We then went to your orange biothane and this also I think produced an excellent uh, stitch. I wasn't as pleased with the lock stitch on this single layer uh, because again it's going to be noticeably thicker than this pink uh, but it also did a great job. And finally this these two layers of biothane, the pink colored one I think it did a fabulous job uh, both on the top stitch and on the lock stitch as well. So definitely a huge thumbs up uh, for this uh, 66 Red Eye. And it also, I think in my judgment, had a little bit better clearance underneath the presser foot when it came to all three of these sew-offs. So depending on the application that you're looking to, uh, to use this for, Lizzie, um, I think the 66 hand crank so far is the better of the two choices, although I think the 301A uh, did a surprisingly good job considering my uh, poor choice in uh, the needle type and also the, uh, the thread type for sure. So I'm pleased. I'm really happy. Never ever sewed this uh, biothane on my workbenches before and uh, I, I'm, I'm happy. So what we're looking at now, and I'm going to move this tripod a little bit. What we're looking at now is Reed's uh, 19 Special. Uh, Reed's 19 Special is finally ready. Had a number of challenges, had uh, some motor issues, had some tension issues, uh, and I think we've resolved those. So my main objective with this uh, 19 Special is to sew leather on it and to sew U.S. Army grade canvas, which is my go-to material. But at the same time, I'm probably going to take a swing at this biothane as well. And on this machine, because I really wanted to look at that stitch quality on top, I do have some upholstery thread, which is going to be closer to a size 69. Now, when you're looking at standard Coates and Clark thread you buy over the counter, it's going to be in the 30 range as far as size. Uh, so we're looking at a thread that's much heavier on this one. And I'm hoping we get a better outcome. So let me zoom in. And I'm going to go ahead and first of all focus on, on a leather sew-off. I'm going to do U.S. Army grade canvas. And then finally we're going to take a swing at this biothane. Again, most people that weren't a little bit crazy would be doing the biothane first. Because obviously the more sewing you do on that needle, 
the more it's going to lose that piercing threshold. But you know what? We're all about the, the real deal here. So I'm going to do the normal sew-offs that I normally would, and then we'll see what happens as far as this biothane. And again, every machine is different. Um, I've had better outcomes on certain sew-offs with hand cranks. I've had better outcomes on other machines that are motorized. So while we right away would say, oh, the Swedish beauty is just going to knock it out of the park on this biothane, I have no doubt it's going to get through the material. But because of the force of that 1.5 amp motor, I would not be surprised in the least if we have a thread break on this machine when we're going through those two layers or even the single layer of biothane because the force of that needle being driven into that material is so much stronger and the friction that's going to be caused by going through this biothane is so much greater than leather or other materials that we typically would sew we again we very likely might see a needle break so let's see what happens but um, I'm entering into it cautiously because I'm just expecting that we might have some challenges with it. So, all right. So, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, first of all, we're going to sew off on three layers of genuine cowhide, just as we just did on the 66 Red Eye Hand Crank, and prior to that on the 301A Singer. Uh, we'll see how this uh, incredible sw Swedish beauty does with three layers of genuine cowhide. Here we go. Let me just check my settings real quick. Okay, good to go. Here we go. It does a lot better when I actually get my foot all the way on the presser foot. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, so there's our top stitch. And as we would expect, it's looking just absolutely spectacular. Our lock stitch on the bottom as well with that uh, kind of a greenish mint green looks absolutely spectacular no surprises here we know that our swedish beauties when they're properly restored they can do three layers of this genuine cowhide without even blinking twice and again we're talking about 12 to 14 ounces of genuine cowhide so reed's machine is a leather sewing machine with steroids or on steroids uh, it got the job done beautifully so our next sew off is going to be, and we've done this innumerable times as well, is our U.S. Army grade canvas. We're going to start with two layers and actually let me bring my needle all the way to the highest position before I forget to do that. I sometimes get a little bit lazy when I'm in front of a Swedish beauty just because they, because of their capacity and that motor size, they forgive me a lot if I miss something, but I'm going to try to do it or do it right anyway. Uh, so we've got two layers to start. I'm going to go ahead and fold it. We're up to four layers. I'm going to fold it one more time. And we're all the way up to eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. So I'm going to try to tuck this underneath that presser foot because that's some thick stuff, folks. When you get to eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas, you're at a totally different level of sewing, honestly. We're, we're like at doing this on this 19 special long arm is like commercial grade sewing when you get up to eight layers of uh, of this uh, u.s army grade canvas okay so here we go eight layers u.s army grade canvas come on buddy keep your foot on the pedal you silly guy all right so even in spite of my shortfalls as usual the Swedish Beauty got the job done. Let me go ahead and pull this out and you can take a look at uh, the stitches, which are much better than my sewing technique sometimes. All right, let me pull this through. So there's our top stitch using uh, uh, Reed's 19 Special, absolutely spot on. The spacing, uh, the formation on that stitch is exactly uh, as it should be. And as we turn this material over to look at that lock stitch, look at the enormity of what we just sewed through. That's eight layers of U.S. Army grade canvas. And the lock stitch as well is absolutely spot on. It's absolutely spectacular. Right in the middle there where I kind of had a pause because my, my foot kind of slipped off the pedal and I wasn't regulating it, you can see the alignment of the stitches is just slightly off. But that's my fault. That's not the machine's fault. 
Reed's machine got the job done uh, perfectly uh, because it's been fully restored at this point as far as its mechanical capabilities. And I love the look of that upholstery thread on top. It's just absolutely spot on. And again, from the side, try that on your Swedish beauty. See if you can get through eight layers of US Army grade canvas. And if you can, send me the video and I'll post it because that is a huge accomplishment if you can get stitch quality like that. All right, so I'm gonna throw that to the side as well. And that's definitely uh, a success in my judgment. So I'm gonna get my thread set, and now we're gonna tackle this, this, this biothane stuff uh, that Lizzie sent to me, Lizzie Rose. Uh, and we'll see how it does with this. We're gonna start as we did on the other machines with a single layer of this orange stuff. And again, because of the force of this machine and how it drives through with that 1.5 amp motor, I would not be surprised if we have a thread break. If we don't, wow. But if we do, no shocker. So here we go, single layer of this biothane. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> All right, well, we, we muddled through it, folks. We muddled, we muddled, buddled. And there's our top stitch. It's looking really good. I'm really pleased with that. The top stitch looks spectacular, which tells you that bobbin carrier is set properly, even facing by a thing like this. Look at it from the side. That could totally mess up the tensioning balance between uh, the uh, upper tension and that bobbin carrier. So, and look at our lock stitch. Absolutely spot on. Probably the best looking lock stitch that I've seen thus far with this single layer of biothane, uh, the orange colored one. So, I'm extremely pleased, especially considering while we're using upholstery thread on top, we are running standard Coates and Clark in the bobbin case. So I was really, quite honestly, expecting that that thread would break. Either one of the threads, just because of the pull factor between uh, that upper and lower tension going through material like this. Again, look at from the end what we just went through. That is ridiculous. And you can see the layering, the configuration of that. It is the equivalent of commercial grade uh, uh, vinyl on steroids. It's absolutely a nightmare to get through but we just did it, as we did on the leather and the eight layers of US Army grade canvas before that. So now here comes the real test. We're gonna to try to get through two layers of this biothane, the pink colored one, which is probably approaching 14 ounces as far as the thickness. We'll see how it does. Again, I would not be surprised in the least if we have a thread break going through this material because unlike the hand crank where I can regulate uh, that, uh, that thread being pulled and the pressure and everything as I'm cranking it by hand and I'm regulating it, this 1.5 amp motor doesn't mess around. It just jumps in and gets the job done. So we'll see what happens, all right? And I'll see if I can keep my foot on the foot control better this time as I'm trying to mow through this stuff. Here we go. Whoa! And we are getting some slip on this Swedish Beauty. I'm going to try to hand crank it because at this point that belt which is cogged is actually slipping on this Baya thing. Again the 301A has a direct drive the hand crank has my direct drive. This 19 Special has a cogged belt, and uh, apparently this is just a little bit too much for it uh, as far as the slippage factor. The motor's fine, but I'm having to hand crank this right now because that cogged belt is actually skipping over that pulley as it's trying to uh, muscle through this stuff. So, at this point, I would say that the victory goes to the 301A 
and to the hand crank, the 66 Red Eye, when it comes to these two layers. And uh, I can reevaluate the tensioning again on that, uh, that belt that's on uh, Reed's machine, but I just think it's the design, to be honest with you. So hand cranked, I think we did just fine. There's our top stitch right there. And get this pulled out a little bit. There's our lock stitch. So the machine can get through these two layers, but that cogged belt, unlike a V-style belt, is, is not sufficient. It's, uh, it's giving out, when that 1.5 amps hits that cog belt under a load like this, it's slipping. Didn't have any trouble with the three layers of leather. Didn't have any trouble with the eight layers of uh, US Army grade canvas. Didn't have any trouble getting through that single layer of biothane but that cog belt slipped when we tried to do these two layers of biothane. So it is what it is. I mean, again, the, the whole deal with live videos is you never know exactly what's going to happen. You know, we don't doctor things, we don't edit things, so you saw it live. Uh, if I hand crank this sucker, we're good to go. But again, on the other sew-offs, I'm very pleased. I'll kind of put them in order from... Uh, the first to the last and I'll zoom on a little bit and I think we're almost running out of camera time so I better hurry or this thing's gonna go kaput so coming out again come on camera come on so coming out again we started with actually that's not correct we started with the leather over here we started with the leather on uh, Reed's machine, three layers of this, genuine cowhide leather, fantastic. We then went, went to the eight layers of U.S. Army grade, grade canvas, fantastic. Single layer of biothane, no trouble at all. Uh, and then finally we went, let me get in a little bit more, come on camera, focus. We finally went to these two layers of biothane and the machine can get through it, but only when I hand cranked it. Because that tiny little belt uh, that is on that cogged uh, wheel uh, was slipping under the pressure of trying to pierce material like that and uh, under uh, the drive of a 1.5 amp motor. And I'll zoom in again on the belt that's actually on Reed's machine. You know, a standard see if I can somehow do it like this. I'll hold it in front of the camera real quick. Over by the needle so I know where I'm at. Okay. So a standard V-belt that's going to be on most green machines is going to be right about this thickness. Can you see that? Yeah, you can. The belt that is on these cog machines by design is that thickness. I'm not making it up. That's a genuine Husqvarna cog belt. And you can see it's about one third the thickness. Uh, it's running over a cogged uh, gear type pulley. But when you put it under a load like this with the two layers of uh, biothane, it was just too much. The good news is I've actually come up with another uh, alternative to this belt that's gonna be about one to two millimeters wider. So it'll do better when it comes to loads like two layers of biothane. But, uh, you know, that's the difference when you go from one Husqvarna Viking to another. If you don't have the benefit of that thicker V-style belt um, and you have a cog design like uh, this uh, Husqvarna 19 Special and some of the other uh, machines, uh, you might run into a challenge if you're going through extreme circumstances like the two layers of biothane. Again, the 66 got it done because I was powering it by hand crank. The, uh, the 301A is direct drive, so it got it done. It was gear to gear. Here we had a belt driven uh, version of this Husqvarna that's cogged that could not get the job done until I hand cranked it. Then it was successful. So uh, again, the wonder of live premieres, never knowing exactly what is going to happen. So. Uh, I hope you found this uh, helpful, Lizzie. Uh, again, as we were going between these three machines, uh, between uh, the 301A, 
the uh, 66 hand crank, and finally, uh, this Husqvarna 19 Special. Um, all three of the machines, in my opinion, were successful and absolutely had a victory. Uh, even this 19 Special, that because of the thinness of that cog belt, could not get through those two layers until I hand cranked it. But again, it is what it is. So, uh, God bless you guys. Stay tuned for other great videos like this.